Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's Coach Jen, and this is Tai Chi to the People. Uh, we are joined by Sam in the Philippines, and we got Zoe here, who you guys know from my videos. We're going to do some push hands today, and the Wu style four move push hand set, which will also do the six move push hand set, uh, will add uh, uh, some moves there. Um, that being said, Sam, uh, I, you had some questions on the form I just posted. Um, and, and this is the Muay Thai Tai Chi Shaolin form. Um, you were asking about the ground. Um, yeah, yes, yes, yes. The, the ground moment, right? So you're, ta you're touching the ground? Something? Touching the ground, yeah. So, so the moment uh, right here of touching the ground. And this is, this is really more of a, of a, uh, of a sensitivity uh, kind of, uh, for, for, for example, uh, wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, or Zoe, could you just come here for a second real quick? Um, so just being able to, to pick the leg, to get behind the, the ankle and the heel, uh, sliding and coming behind the heel, um, it's just something that I picked up from Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so I put it, into, uh, put it into the form. And it often, it, I'll, here, I'll drop that again. So this is a very Kung Fu posture. And this motion here of, of wrapping the finger around a, um, a, 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 a limb, a head, et cetera, is really, would not necessarily be done from this posture. Uh, so this is a combination of two postures. That's not to say that it could be. Uh, you might transition over someone and spin around and, and, and do, uh, do something like that to get side control, et cetera. Um, and so it, it's really me combining and experimenting with two ideas merging into one rather than it being a uh, direct application kind of moment. Um, so, and, and but please always feel free to ask questions on, on some of these forms. I'm gonna be doing a lot more hybrid forms, uh, videos for hybrid forms. Um, so people can see, hey, you know what? This is what happens when we start taking Tai Chi principles and putting them into boxing, kickboxing, Sancho, Swai Zhao, Judo, et cetera. Uh, so people can see, hey, you know what? These are, uh, this, this, this makes total sense. I can take my own style that has nothing to do with Tai Chi and turn it into Tai Chi. That, is, that to me is a, a lofty goal, but I think we'll get there. So... <laughs> And without further ado, let's let's jump into the push hands. And uh, let me just here we go. Fix this pin. All right, wonderful. Okay, guys. So everyone knows Zoe here. So Zoe, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, with with uh, she's only been training for less than a year. What, six months, three months. Uh, no, like it's almost eight months. April. Yeah, so almost eight months months, and she's really been advancing wonderfully. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the four move push hands that we did last week. And we're going to warm up by doing it on our own. So first, let's just do uplifting heaven, imaginary strain, let's just on top of the head, tailbone drops down, inhaling up, exhale out, inhaling up, interlace, exhaling down, inhaling up, stretch out of the hips onto the toes, exhaling down. Remember that the mouth is closed, the tongue is on the ceiling of the mouth, and all the breathing is into the base diaphragm, the lower dantian, three finger lengths below the belly block, the second chakra of yoga. Inhale out one, exhale out, four, exhale down, inhale out. So that was the basic uh, one breath per movement. Now we're gonna to start to do two stage inhalation. Well, stage one, stage two, inhale even deeper. Exhale down, inhaling up, exhale down. The reason that I'm highlighting that is because in the push hands drill we're gonna be doing, you're gonna do multiple, multi-stage inhalation and exhalation. Inhale, you have one, exhale out. Inhale one, this is three stage. Two, inhale deeper, three, inhale even deeper. Exhaling, push the color out, down the arms, down the legs. And four stage, inhaling at one, even deeper two, even deeper three, even deeper four. Exhaling out. Now we're gonna use belly, obliques, lower back, entire waist. Each stage is going to activate uh, those, those muscles to pull the color visualization to the very center point 
of the body, the center point, no matter where I turn, the center will be remain the same. So you want to pull it into that center visualization point, that chakra, belly, obliques, lower back, the entire waist, opening up like a bell. Exhale. Now let's just do dragon whips his head, feet shoulder width apart, uh, and that shoulder width and a half apart. Tailbone dropping. This is your half horse stance. Hands hollow fist on. Hips and pelvis rotating on the femurs and exhale down. Inhale, one. Eyes on the belly bone. Exhale down. Two. Exhale down. Remember the inhalation should feel like you're climbing a rope. And exhale out to release the rope. Inhale, climb the rope. Exhale. And reverse. And when you're done, drop the arm, inhale, down. exhale out, inhale, draw it, exhale, shift to one side, and inhaling up, and exhale out. So notice that my hands, exhale, shift to one side. Notice that I keep the press here. Very important. These are the little details that are often missed in Tai Chi and are often, if they're not articulated, they're left to the individual. And there are some best practices in my experience uh, of, of what to do with the hands and the body in these moments. In other words, exhaling down and I do this gentle press. So I'm dropping as if the, the hands are floating down, but I'm giving an extra pressing downward motion. This press so you can see here that I'm going to hold as I shift my weight. Play push hands one second. And so this is freestyle push hands. This press is happening right now. Look at it right here. Right, right here. Let's just walk a little closer to the, <laughs> to the camera. This is the same press. So I've dropped my weight. It's the same exact thing. And notice that it's not, I'm not, let's play again. Go. And I'll play from here and I'll move around. And notice that I'm keeping this still. So I'm not doing too much. And whether that happens for a fraction of a second or a minute or two, that press, that the, the intention is there to hold. So when you switch your weight and you're coming out of an exercise and you're shifting the stance, we're going to go into our push hand stance now, meaning that one, the back leg will be facing forward, inhaling up and exhale forward. When, when you keep this, I highly recommend feeling that, that, that weight, you press down and you hold and you just maintain the structure. And no matter where you move, you still, it's not locked as in, uh, there's, there's no muscular tension. You're just holding the shape, maintaining your posture and the shape and being able to adapt that, to adapt the, 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 these concepts at different angles. That's a major component. Of, of being able to adapt your Tai Chi to the reality of martial arts. So we've shifted to one side. I'm picking up my left leg, putting it forward. And so we will do the same. And we're gonna start with the four move push hands drill, but just on our own, and then we're gonna start doing it together. Exhale, pushing forward from the back leg into the front. So notice that I'm pushing from the back leg into the front on the angle. So I'm pushing from the right to the left. You can switch and you can do it that way as well. But remember uh, what we talked about last week is that uh, if I'm pushing that way, there's compensation that needs to happen in the, in the quad, in the hips and the, and the core area. So we're going to start with, with this, the simple way first before we warm up. And then we're going to double press or we're going to do the palm press. And then we're going to inhale in for the elbows on one and then the other. Exhale, pushing down. So we were talking about two-stage inhalation and exhalation. So you can inhale one, inhale deeper two, exhale stage one, exhale even deeper stage two. Inhaling one, inhaling two, exhaling one, exhaling two. And you can do your best. I highly recommend when you pick a breathing pattern 
do your best to maintain this breathing pattern when you play with your partner. And the reason for that is because your breathing pattern is going to change. It's going to change based on the scenario and you cannot predict the scenario that you're going to be in. So you want to be able to feel confident in your breath work, whatever your opponent throws at you, because your opponent is going to surprise you. And then your body's going to have to shift and to go into autopilot to an extent while the, while the, the mind starts to calculate what to do next. So you can strategize while you're dealing with the, the, prep, the, the, the challenge at hand. So we'll have our left legs forward and we're gonna do the same thing and, and we're gonna maintain that breath work. So Zoe's going, let me make sure we have good lighting. I'm gonna angle a little bit this way. So there we go, so, and push, stretch one, and then you're gonna, and then you're gonna drill into the chest, two, and then one, two. So I'm inhaling one, inhaling two, exhaling one, exhaling two. And that final exhalation is me really relaxing myself into my opponent, but not over committing. So that back leg is anchored to the ground. My groin is flexible. The crease in the groin, is, it's, it's active and aware, meaning that as I'm dropping into it, I feel the weight washing down the inside of the front leg as I have the anchor on the back leg. So weight washes down the inside of the front while the anchor is in the back and I stay flexible and aware here so that I can drop that weight as much as I possibly can into her hips, into her chest and hips. One, two. And remember that drilling posture, that drilling hand, look at the other hand. This is just... This has multiple, multiple reasons for this. So this bottom hand is brushing her belly and reminding her to sink and sit. And then she's pressing on me. That's, that was a really good press. She, she, Zoe just pinned me. If you guys notice, this is actually a big moment. Zoe just pinned me. And this is one of the things that, you, that we really have to be aware of. Let's take a few steps. Let's keep the posture. Let's go closer to the camera. This is super fun. So Zoe just pinned my arm. So if you can see here, She's pinned, it's a staple. She's like stapling my arm to my chest and then continuing here. This is great because that means that I gave up too much space. And I, it depends on the feeling. Like right now, so someone may push my arm into my body, but they may not be doing what Zoe's doing right now. I can actually feel how connected she is into my core. So that's really special. And, and, and Zoe's is, uh, doing a really wonderful job at a, uh, and advancing in, in how she's doing this stuff um, because it, it takes different people different amounts of time to get that sensitivity. So the pin is really a powerful thing. And if you receive the pin, really important is that you soften the hips and the shoulders more. And of course, have this hand that aims right for the elbow already prepared to help move that pressure off of you and then bring it right back. And of course, we want to always be, while you're doing this, you're going to, you're playing with your opponent, but you have to keep on checking in with yourself. And so really make sure that you're softening the shoulder blades so the shoulder blades fall forward as you, they extend forward as you exhale and, and drop into your opponent. Now, so, a, a, a Gianluca from Italy reached out to me a few days ago yesterday, the day before yesterday, asking about Grandmaster William C.C. Chen's reverse breathing that I talk about often. And, and we clarified that he does not mean, and I do not mean, the reverse breathing, the Taoist reverse breathing, where when you suck in the belly, and yoga does it as well at times, and you suck in the belly as you inhale. I do not mean that. Um, and we'll potentially come up with a better name to, to differentiate between the reverse breathing and the inhalation, the filling, the inflation, as Grandmaster William C.C. Chen, he's never really called it reverse breathing. He calls it inflating and deflating. So when, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because when your breathing pattern changes, and let's say you inhale on the first push, if that were to happen, really important uh, notes is just ma making sure that you still with that inhalation, still feel the shoulder blades naturally come up. 
disappear into the upper bag. So naturally inflating. And if you do the inflation, there's, there'll be, a, I'm not gonna talk about that too much today because that'll just detract from the purity of the Wu style in this, in this, pot, um, in this set, in this routine. Um, and that's not to say that, that the inflation is, is impure. It's just more so I want you to get the Wu style way of doing it first before we start deviating and adding other mechanics that are massively helpful here too. Um, but we're going to focus on Wu style. So exhaling, sinking in, make sure to brush your opponent. Excellent. And look at Zoe brushing my belly. So she's reminding me. And ideally, you feel that only at minimum. So that means that, if, that I may need to step back so I feel less of her, her bottom hand on my belly. That's another way to gauge your um, distance. So she's brushing me right here with the back of her hand. And I'm like, okay, well, do I need to sink more? Do I need to take a half step back? Do I need to lengthen my stance so that I can get the best work out of this drill? So I can get the most benefit out of this drill. And she's not pushing me back. It's still a very gentle brush. And this gentle brush is so important because you want to be able to have, you want to be able to turn this gentle brush into a bird's tail or a ward off position. That means that, hey, you know, I'm right here. I, I may need to push her at some point, or I may need to get behind my opponent and turn my hand and flip this gentle touch into a leverage point. And so just really being able to have that sensitivity and know that at any moment you can turn this into the, your partner and turn and do something with it and to manipulate their weight in the position. Very important. So now we're going to switch. We're going to go an extra push. And this extra push, we're only going to do it, we're not going to do the, the sixth uh, move yet. We're doing the extra push here to switch sides with the hands. So we're keeping the legs the same. And now she's pushing me. One, two. Uh, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think we did. Did we? Yeah, we did do it. So one, two. And now I'm pushing out. And she's directing me over. And now I'm dropping. So notice that the body mechanic changes meaning that my intention is to push her this way. I'm trying to push her over her right shoulder. She's guiding me toward her, over her left shoulder. She's guiding me toward the right. So she's taking that pressure, rolling me toward the right, and then I'm returning. So she's pressing me in and I'm rolling her off. And you have to be able to, and the great thing about this exercise and one of the biggest benefits of, of push hands in general, but specifically these push hands drills and specifically this one, is making sure that you give just enough but not too much because too much, too little, same problem. A lot of people discount this, this exercise. They, they say, hey, you know what? This is, this, is, this is not real martial arts, et cetera. This is, this is not helpful. Oh, this, is, this isn't real because you're doing uh, you know, the same thing over and over again. Like what we're doing is we're making slight variations every single time we do this mo motion. For example, I might press down and she has to come out of it and now I'm pushing up. And then I might push up and she might push down. And so all these little variations and you'll, you'll notice that even just now I did a, a scooping motion with my elbow. So rather than aim for the elbow with my hand, I aimed with my elbow, elbow to elbow and I roll, and now I'm pressing, and look at this, I have this up here. So you really want to be able to, to look at this as an exercise that has all these variations that are connected to grappling and to, to true martial experience, and to have the type of poise that we, that we you know, poise, I was, I was just reading on my whiteboard today. Poise equals peace and power. That's poise. And I believe I got that, I forgot where I got that from, but poise equals peace and power. And uh, might be from the science of getting rich, but which is a phenomenal book. If you ever read that. But if we really want peace and power, we really have to 
put ourselves in the scenario where we're consistently feeling these, this pressure. So we're super calm and super controlled under the pressure. Like, oh man, okay, cool. I know what to do. And your body will know what to do because you're going to take the time to do it. So I want to just adjust here and I want to adjust the angle so you guys can get a better angle here. So let's stand this way. All right. And it's always going to push here. And you know what we're going to do just to switch it up? We're going to switch legs. So we're going to put our, Zoe put her right leg forward. We had our left leg forward the entire time. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going, to sh we're, we're going to show how to switch legs. So just switch legs real quick. And great. So Zoe's going to do the start again with the push. One, two, one, two. And now she's going to push again. One, I'm going to step back as she steps forward. I'm stepping back. She's stepping forward. One, two. And now we've switched legs. One, two. And now look. I just finished my, my final push, I had two pushes. My second push, which is the drill on the brush, my brush hand goes immediately to the airspace of the elbow. Now, it doesn't necessarily go to the elbow because you might be dealing with somebody who has longer arms. You may not be able to reach their elbow. She might, or someone else might turn their waist more and make it hard for me to reach the elbow. So if I reach for the elbow, I overcommit. So it's super important for you to know where your boundaries are in terms of your reaching. So I'm only reaching to this airspace because I know that this is the limitation of my, of where I feel comfortable to be able to respond martially in, a, in an effective way. So I've reached to right here. It doesn't matter who I'm playing with. I reached to right here. And so now I know that because we're doing this set, her elbow is going to come back into play right here. So now I'm connected and she presses on me. I go right back and here you're going to see it again right now, brushing the belly airspace. Boom, comes right to my hand. Really important strategy because it, it, it really requires you to know where you're comfortable. And the more you do freestyle push hands as well and, and, and play specifically with intention. When you do freestyle push hands, let's just break for one second. We're gonna do freestyle push hands, but the only thing I'm going to do with freestyle push hands, this is part of how you adapt some of these concepts from what we're doing in this drill to freestyle. So we're gonna play, she, I was always gonna do whatever she liked. My only intention is going to be to keep my hands on her elbow. It's the only thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna redirect her based on only the elbow. So let's play, let's go. And do anything but. So I'm playing just with the elbow. That's all I'm doing. And if I stay and I play around, I just know, hey, okay, I can keep playing here. And if she starts moving, doing stuff like that, I'm going to, to take two hands on one. I have two hands on her one elbow here and I'm just playing for right here. And whatever she, she does, I might aim for the other one. Now I'm aiming right for the elbow and now I'm back to double on the elbows. So super important, super important, we can go back to the drill, but to play your freestyle games from that perspective of, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do only this one concept from my push hands, from my Tai Chi and train that idea and train my mind to, to strategize around this one idea rather than bouncing around uh, to, to say, okay, I'm gonna do this technique and that technique and that. So uh, it's, it's good stuff. So we're gonna have right leg forward and pressing, pressing, push, push. And now we're gonna reverse the hands or add another push. And Zoe pushed me one more time with another drill. And she's gonna add that, oh, that was a great push. Fantastic push. And I have to come back. <laughs> One, two, one, two. So now we've switched sides. Remember, you can switch legs and you can switch the arms, meaning which direction you start first. So we've switched. And Sam, let me know if you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas so far, because we're going to go into the six push, which I don't know. I don't know have you done that before? Is it the long or walking? No, that's Donald. That's different. That's fun black nail she has, too. I didn't notice that. It's called talent to be able to do push hands with long nails. That's Ego Stallion. <laughs> yes, Ego Stallion. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> All right, so. 
Now we're going to go into the, we're going to switch again, just so that you have, you guys can see this, this exercise. So actually, you know, we're going to do it on our own first, and we're going to go from the four to the six, the sixth move. So let's put our left foot forward. And we're going to start as we did before. So I'm going to go from the, from the weighted leg, and I'm going to push into the lead leg. Remember, you're here, your back is straight, meaning that the tailbone is dropping down. Imagine a shirt lifts you up. You should be able to lift your foot all the way. That's how you know that you have a proper boost stance. And this weighted foot, notice that my toes are facing this wall for this angle. And my toes here are up rather than down. The second you put your toe down, look what happens. Look at this slight adjustment in my hips. The second you put your toe down, look at that. To touch the ground, I have to cover, I have to claim more space forward. So this is important when it's intentional. And I do not recommend doing that when you're doing the drill. When you're doing this drill, unless you're gonna train for a competition, I recommend getting the, the added benefit of picking the toe up, which puts more weight on the back leg. If you find pressure in your kneecap, that means you need more weight on your heel than on your, the ball of the foot and the big toe. You don't, you don't wanna make sure that you don't have pressure sliding down into the kneecap. So you have to put it in the center of the heel here and you lift up and the heel is your anchor and it's your main focal point for the stance. When you go forward, you're in your A-frame, straight line from the back heel to the top of the head and then the nose over the knee, knee over the big toe. So toe, knee, nose, toning nose, as Grandmaster William C.C. Chairman said. So, and when you're there, make sure that the shoulder, the hips and shoulders are not square. When I first learned Wu style, I learned how to do, uh, to maintain square hips and shoulders forward. I consider that wrong at this point in my training. Um, so I bring the uh, Grandmaster Wing of CC Chen softening of the crease here into my Wu style. So that means that I always drop into a wind up. And this wind up is going to allow me to push forward even more if I'm doing a brush knee or a particular push, it's gonna keep me more rooted, but if I maintain this square position, this square is going to maintain tension in the groin. And that tension is going to allow me to be pulled here into this area because I'm not, I'm not fully committed uh, into, into rooting into this front leg and maintaining my A-frame. I'm actually holding space here, which is unnecessary, holding tension. And you can always pull somebody into this space right here this space, pull them right there. And so it's much harder when they're wound up into this leg to pull them here because they can drop. They can do little drops. And so really, really important. If you're here, it's gonna cost you to do that drop, cost you time. So just make sure that you soften that front, that, that groin. Little note before we start. So here we are on the back leg, palms up, exhaling to the front leg. One, exhale two, inhale one, Inhale two, so that's our four move. And now we're gonna go six, one, two, and now watch, three, drilling, drill up, drill up. And then elbow, as you go back, one, two, three, and push, one, two, and drill up, one, two, one, two, three, drill up. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this drill, as you can see here, is going to, to drop this entire blade. Remember the Wu style has arms like blades. So if you're a boxer and you're familiar with the term 11s, you wanna keep your 11s up, the ones. This is a one and this is a one. So you want the number 11 all, at all times. This is super important if you do Muay Thai or if you do Wu style Tai Chi to recognize and remember this blade is part of what you're dropping onto your opponent. So when we do this exercise and we come together, we're gonna to start with our left leg forward just as we just did. And Zoe's gonna push one, two with a drill. And now three, she's going to drive and Rotate this arm up. Exactly. Now look at the, all the surface area. Just take a moment here. Look at all the surface area on my chest. 
She's got my collarbone. She's got my neck with her fingers. She's got her elbow just above my sternum. And look, she can drop the hip and push it into my, my, my sternum. So now, obviously, she's overextended a bit here, but the concept is still correct in terms of the connection to my chest. So the adjustment I would make in Zoe is to just make sure she doesn't overcommit. So let's go for that again. So she, she pulled me here, sorry, and you push me up. And I have to redirect it, and I push one, and then two, and then I give her the same drill. So I drill up, and then she pushes one, two, and three. Awesome. And now look, this arm, this arm I have up right here. So she's coming up here. I want to take this off my neck. So I'm sliding up. I'm sliding up and then redirecting it. When we switch directions or switch arms, you'll see what I mean by this. One, two, and then three. So remember, you're doing a double push for one, a drilling palm into the center of the chest with the brush on the belly for two. And then that brush in the belly, drive in, and you're doing another brush on the belly with the hand that just did the, the drilling palm. And then you turn up. Now look at this hand. I'm already ready to receive. So this is not an idle hand. At best, you are counter, you're creating, completing the shape. This is a concept that I know mostly from Grandmaster Wayne and C.C. Chen rather than my Wu style, but it's helped my Wu style a lot. That means that rather than having uh, the, the, this is the yang hand and the yin hand just being super soft. The yin hand is energized. And again, energizing is also a concept from, from Brian Master William Chen's um, form that I, that's where I found it. So here I'm going to energize my fingers to complete this shape and wait for the elbow. I might reach for it. I might just keep it right here and then she'll press me back. Boom, there's the elbow. One, two, and three. And then I press one two, and three. Drilling, 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 drilling. Upward. One, she's pinning, which is great. Two, and then three. One, two, and three. Two, and awesome. This, this is fantastic. So Zoe just got me, which is great. And it's really, really important. It's really important to, to acknowledge these moments because why does someone get you off balance? Well, it, it's alignment. It's your ability to also time. So I didn't time her early enough um, to remove the pressure before it got to my center line. So she connected to my center line and moved me off balance. And so I have to make an adjustment in my timing so that that doesn't happen again. And if you find that that happens to you, so, so important to recognize that timing means that how soon do I turn when the pressure's coming? If, if I'm not turning soon enough, that means I need to do it a little sooner, a little earlier. Um, and earlier means the distance over time. So as she's coming this way, and if I'm turning here and I'm getting locked up, maybe I need to turn here when she's only right here and be setting up my hips and my chest to redirect her so that I feel more confident in redirecting that pressure rather than falling off balance. So I'm gonna, we're gonna keep going and I'm gonna, we're gonna switch legs and, and yeah, we can do this one, two, and just step back real quick. Great, so we just did the step back on this. <laughs> For the purpose of, okay, cool. And yeah, let's, let's press and we'll, we'll switch arms to one, two, and then three. So we just switched arms. So if you wanted to switch arms, the same one. That's the third. I'm going to do one more. So we're keeping the same arm as last time, and we switched the legs. So now, now you can see the angles that you couldn't see before. Two, three. She's pressing on me, and now I'm coming. One, two. Drill palm and three. Look at this lean, so important. And now look at this hand. I'm still waiting for the elbow. I'm, I'm ready. I'm not just out here. I'm not just being all Tai Chi, like, whoa, you know, like, that's cool. But this hand has to be martial. It can't just counterbalance. 
So you put it right here and wait for that elbow. I'm dropping my weight here, but notice that my, I'm very rooted on this leg, my back heel into the ground and boom. I might even turn out a little bit, and rotate the hips so that I get more pressure dropping into her. And look at her, she's already on the arms pushing up and I'm already right here for the elbow. One, two, three, nice. And drive and drive and drive right here. One. So now we have this is the six move boost down. She's already got me right here. She, this is great. So that means I have to notice that I'm, I pumped up a little bit. She's actually got me in a very compromised scenario. So I pumped up a little bit, which is actually wrong. I have to bring myself back down and I have to turn. I have to really use my. She's pushing right into my. Ah, she got me. <laughs> So she pushed right into my, my, uh, my abdominal muscles, which is great. She actually found a groove right here on the ab muscle, on the top, just beneath my, my, um, uh, my, my floating rib. She slid her elbow right here, which is fantastic. Like it, it's that attention to detail that you want to have on your partners, on any sparring partner, et cetera, to be able to know that, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this shoulder and I'm, I'm going to take this part of the rib and I'm going to turn just that part of the rib. And I'm going to watch how they react. Based on how they react, I'm going to strategize and I'm going to do it again a little bit later because I know that their reaction, you do something twice to find the reaction. You do it once to see if it happens. You do it again to see if it happens again. And then you know. If it happens twice, you know that that's going to be their reaction. This is part of martial strategy in, in, this, in martial sports. And so, okay, cool. They've done it twice. That means I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to do it again. And you want to do these little experiments on your opponent's body um, in the most subtle way possible because you want it to be unconscious. You want to get the unconscious reactions out of somebody because those unconscious reactions, you can bet they're going to happen again. And so she did a great job just now. And my, my unconscious reaction was to pump up. So I got to fix that. Notice that I'm not talking as much now because I got like twice on camera. <laughs> Which rarely happens. And remember, you can always switch the switch the angles. And what I mean by that is that I my drill can come down and in. It doesn't have to drill up. Her push can be down and I'm pushing it off. And then I look at this. I didn't even pick up my hand. I use my elbow to roll against her elbow again. And boom, right here, the third one, I roll it up. So as you get the timing and the rhythm, you're going to start to find your own creativity. And more so, you're going to find the form. You're going to find your Tai Chi forms in this, in this, um, this set. And you're going to find so many different variations. You're going to find so many different variations. And each one of them has its own martial strategy or multiple martial strategies around it. Well, <laughs> press one, two, and look at this. Even on top, you can even come over and slide the hand off. And look at this. This sets up. This the wonderful single whip. Single whip is right here. Single whip right here, right here. Some people do it long, but this is single whip. Boom, right here, right on the elbow. Crane fist on this, this, this uh, wrist right here. So again, all these things, little details. We're gonna switch sides and we're gonna switch legs. So what do we have for us now? Hmm? Uh, let's keep our right there first. Okay, head press. One, two. Sam, any uh, thoughts, questions, or ideas right now on uh, on this set? Uh, or now I'm picking up uh, the lessons for, by using using this one. The, the, you call it the Shaolin hand. So for sure. Hold on. Let me let me just. Uh, oh yes, the Shaolin hand. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just adding also the, 
right now it right just uh, got internalized with using my backhand. So it's like this one. Okay. So so down, this is the backhand. More or less, okay, I, so I, I, right saying, now like, it's more, like more this clear. Moment, right? Yeah, and also the elbow. Yes. The elbow roll. Yes. Like a Wing Chun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more or less, I, uh, right now it's very clear for me. Okay, great. Great, and, and, and it's super important to note that uh, for those who, who call it play guitar or, or uh, uh, seven star or sparrow's tail, like this position, middle finger on the, on the pulse position, we keep doing this. We keep doing this, but then it starts to, 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 to become, uh, we start to get the variation. So all we're doing is a hand, this is hand on elbow and this is the pressure, this is the essentially the ward off pressure that we're redirecting. It could be the, the Omitofo like Shaolin hand. It could be this, it could be this, and, and it could be I'm coming over and, dri and driving, coming over with a crane fist and driving it the other way. So there's all these variations. And again, each one of them has its own bridges to its own strategy. And so it's, it's really up to the practitioner to do this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours every week. It is so important. If you have someone in your household that you can do this with, that's one of the most, the greatest gifts, period. Uh, it's, it's the reason my father and I had the opportunity to, to be on the U.S. Tai Chi push dance teams because every day we're doing this morning, lunch, and afternoon, even for five minutes, every single day. And she's like, ah, and maybe on, on one day we're like, oh, you know, we're just going to lay down and not do it. But like for the most part, it, 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 if you have someone in, the, in your near proximity, I love training with Zoe because she's so dedicated. And so she's consistently improving and she looks you know, down the street and it's great. And so, so you know, it's, it's just wonderful when you have someone close by. Yeah. For, for eight months, the, the way Zoe's moved for eight months is very good. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, I, mean, I, I think probably he doesn't know the form. <laughs> exactly. So she doesn't do the woo form yet. So she, she's she's yeah, yeah. she's doing. I can, a, I can see. <laughs> she's doing. She's doing a great job. So yeah, uh, yeah. Very, very doing a, you're you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let, let's 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 finish up this. Um, uh, these uh, any any ideas that you want us to to expand upon, Sam? So maybe because we have uh, from the woo form, we have this one. Yeah. Like this uh, is uh. Uh, what yeah. is the name of this form? Uh, as if closing the door. So this is from here. Mm -hmm. This one, for example, your your two hands is, is uh, holding here and for an. Yep. Pressing the, the forearm. Yep. Probably yep. you can do this. It's like uh, you're pre you're locking the the wrist. Yep. Yeah, yeah from here, right? From yes. Here. So if you have two 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 arms pressing. On the forearm, you can maybe you can lock lock it down. Yes, so I I, I would differentiate between, and from calling it a lock to calling it a pin or a staple. And the reason is because a lock normally you are you are locking around the arms. Uh, okay. okay. You know, so you want it, like a, a locks uh, they're they're they they have very particular leverage points versus this pin where if you're pinning here or stapling you like. Even a pin can be, this can be considered a pin, boom, right here. So I pinned her, her wrist to my, to my rib cage and I'm not actually squeezing, I'm just letting gravity. So this is technically more of a pin and notice that I can drag her um, than this. And this is really more about stapling. And so- Staple, okay. okay. Sir? Yes, yes, yeah. 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 So they, that maybe the terminology and the usage. Yes, so just, just to be able to clarify the difference of, of, of the feelings uh, and to, to be able to say, okay, cool, this is, you could call it pin too, but again, like this, is, this is on her body and it's going to make her feel uncomfortable, your opponent feel uncomfortable because they have to get their own arm. It, it doesn't feel like they have control of their arm. Um, I will note this, this move here that you're talking about here and then punch. Um, this is, I, I saw... I actually have it in the uh, one second. I'm going to grab a CD. I want to show you something. Okay, so I'm very proud to show this because I've never shown this. I hardly show it to anybody. 
Um, this, I got this in Chinatown one day and it's a VCD. I never had like a VCD player. That was not really a thing uh, in, in the States. And so this, this, this wonderful, it's got Jet Li, but it's, got, it's called This Is Kung Fu. And yeah, I highly recommend folks take a screenshot or something like that. because This is, I don't know where else you could find this. And maybe one day I'll put it online. I don't want to you know, be a copyright infringer. But the reason I'm bringing this over is because there's one moment in this where two guys are doing a wushu form. They're doing a, a two-person wushu form. And I, my mind was blown in the wu style Tai Chi to see this guy do this move. One, he went one, two, but he used it as a ward off in a wushu form. So he went one, two, three. And this one, two, three, I thought was very, very interesting. And it made me rethink of the, the Tai Chi, uh, the Wu style application. And I think it's really, really important when we're doing these, uh, the, the, the playing here and doing the, the push hands to, to recognize even this, this short moment right here. This is the second push. So we're only doing the four, the four move. So even this short moment right here, right, right here. If my arm was extended, it would be this, a, a similar mechanic to having it tighter. And so this mechanic is so similar. And look at this. I'm just turning and now I'm pressing. And I have sometimes in, in the, these, this push hands drill, you might do things like this, this little praying mantis style elbow. So this is so similar to this here, here. And it's the same shape. And all we're doing is making slight adjustments because it's pressure here. I'm getting it off, I'm aiming for the elbow. And now I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna push. So I have my, I have my hand on the wrist, I'm controlling here, but I'm also, I'm creating this gentle, this gentle lock right here because I'm keeping her elbow downward with my forearm. And then I'm putting that elbow, the point of her elbow right into her, her rib cage. So it's just really, really important that all these little things you can bring into play in, in, in the, this push hands drill. And that's why it's so valuable because you can just, there's so many variations, but you're always doing the same thing. It becomes very meditative. It becomes a, it's a wonderful massage for your, for the partners because you're getting all this meridian massage on the arms. You're getting the rotation and, and, and for, for the organs uh, that, that's just so fantastic. And then, and then you get all this martial benefit. So it, to me, it's just like, this and a great meal and some tea, it's like a fantastic Saturday. So I used to do this for three hours every Saturday in Chinatown, Manhattan with Sifu Keith Tong and my, my, all my Tai Chi uncles and my dad. So here we are again, just to bring out this little two, and we're just doing that two push and back. Just the two push and back. And then we're gonna go one more, she's gonna push one more. Now we're on three. And we're going one, two with the drill, three with the drive up or downward. Two, three. So one, and it's that drilling palm two. And now we have the forearm. Remember that forearm, the blade of the forearm is aiming towards your partner. So one with the on, two, that drilling palm right into the heart. She just did the only Tofu Buddha arm to get the end press. And here it is. Here's that, my Buddha hand right here, my only Tofu Shaolin, and then three, I roll it up. Notice that I get this hand right underneath. I wanna get this pressure off, so I bring it right up on the inside of my body as if I'm sliding my hand up, and then I get it off, and then I bring it right back to my press. All right, so let's get some stretching in. And if, if anyone has any thoughts, questions, or ideas on this, as usual, please reach out. Uh, but we're gonna do our, 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 our ending stretching routine. Feet two fists apart, parallel, inhaling up. Your fingers are gonna reach to the back, chest to the sky, to the ceiling, hips forward, weight on your toes, exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Soften the knees, inhaling up. Fingers back, chest up, hips forward, weight on the toe. Exhale, push the color through the hands and drop the head. Inhaling out to bring one foot 
forward, same way we're, we're standing before, the toe up, exhaling back down. Hold, inhale deep. Exhale, pull yourself deeper, inhale up. And switch legs, exhaling down. Touch the toe, hold. Inhale deep. Exhale, pull yourself a little deeper. Inhale up. Switch leg, 45 degrees. Exhaling down. Hold, inhale deep. Exhale, pull yourself deeper. Inhale up. Switch legs. Exhale down. Touch the toe and hold. Inhale deep. Exhale, push the color visualization down the leg to soften the muscle and pull yourself in. And then inhaling up. And then switch legs 90 degrees, exhaling down, touch the toe, hold, inhale deep. Exhale, push the color into the muscle. Melt the tension away, pull yourself deeper, inhaling up. And one more time, exhaling down, touch the toe, hold, inhale deep, exhale, push the color into the muscle, soften the muscle as you pull yourself in, inhaling up. And bring one leg behind the other. Just adjust this camera so you can see. One leg behind the other, exhale. Try to make the weight double weighted. So I'm gonna shift from one leg onto both. Now I have both of my legs trying to support the same amount of weight. I'm exhale, pushing the color down my legs. And you can fold the arms and hang just for a moment here. Inhale deep, exhale, soften the vertebrae, soften the neck so the head hangs, pulls to the ground, hips go to the ceiling. Inhale up and switch legs, kick this leg behind and exhale, shift the weight onto both legs. Watch the color down both legs. Hold the arm and hang. Inhale deep. Exhale, drop, drop, drop. Hips are being lifted to the sky as you inhale and as you exhale, the head falls to the ground. It's almost like the collarbone is being pulled to the ground. As the hips are being lifted to the sky. Release the arm, inhaling up. And exhale, wash color down the legs, white light to the ground. Inhale, pelvis rotates on the femur onto your toes, turn to your right. Exhale, wash down. Inhaling up, onto the toes, turn to the left. Exhale, wash down. Inhaling up, over the head, down the back. Exhale, wash down. And slap it up. Up the inside. Over the shoulders. And down the back. Inhaling up. And just the fingertips. Exhale down. Just the fingers lift. The fingers are going to pull the arms. The arms are straight down. Inhale. The fingers pull the arms up. Exhale. As the fingers lower the arms. Rub the hands together. And of course, as usual, up on the face to the side. Up on the face to the side. Up on the face to the side. Fingers to the scalp. Front to back. Back to front. Front to back. Back to front. Massage the scalp. Back, back to front. Fingers on the forehead, sides, circles, and reverse it. Temples, one, two, three, four, five, reverse, one, two, three, four. Up, over, down, under the ears. Strong pressure for the immune system. On the earlobe, make circles, one. Under the eyes, under the eyes, one, two. For the heart, right here, one, two. Five, the heart, one, two. Top and bottom. And switch top and bottom. Above the teeth on the right, on both sides, on top sides. And then on the bottom, just under the gums. And then tongue. Mm -hmm. And I'll reverse it. And even shatter the teeth very gently together. Just for a moment, with the mouth closed, and let the saliva generate. 
and then swallow saliva three times. For the kidneys, fingers, four fingers on the sternum, up and down. And yes, on the floating ribs, little crane fist on the floating ribs. Yeah, sure that. And flicking the fingers out, one, two, three. And thumb, the center of the palm. We're gonna drive, we're gonna drive pressure into that set, hold, press and hold. And then drill around, one, two, three, four, five, and then tap around, circle one, two, three, four, each circle bigger, five, top and bottom, and then sides. Massage top and bottom of the fingers, and then sides. Top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, sides. Do your best to let the massaging hand, fingers float into the, just fall right into the groove, the natural grooves of the fingers, press and hold, Press and hold, and massage one. And then switch sides. Thumb on the center of the palm, press and hold, and then drill. One, two, three, four, five, and tap around. One, two, circle three, four, even bigger. Five, top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom. Side. Top and bottom. Mm. Yes. I thought fingers were hard to draw because of all the little bones and grooves. Oh, yeah, it's true. And my press and hold. An artist, and she told me that's why the fingers are the hardest. And massage. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, five. And grab one, two, three, four, five. Close the eyes and have a white line to the belly. Spread it to the whole body. Uh, inhale, toes to the top of the head, like a tidal wave, white line going to the top of the head. Then wash it down the back like a waterfall, like the sound going into the bone marrow. Uh, inhale up the left side, all the way to the top of the head, like a tidal wave, roll it down the right side. Let it wash into the bone marrow, cascade down. Uh, inhale, wet line to the belly. Push it down the legs, into the ground. And feel that sound that you're making go into the floor and around you and let the light spread out, visualization at the same time. Uh, Push it to the top of the head and come out like a fountain and then make a big bubble around you. Feel it in your ego. Uh, just have gratitude for the body, the good people in your life, the space for you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Zoe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then thank you, guys. Thank you, Sam. And uh, thank you, everybody who watches these. Love you guys. And if you ever have a thought, question, or idea, of course, just post it in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this and I'll be consistently posting more and more and more stuff. Patreon.com slash Jans Tai Chi is how to support the channel. If you want to see more and more videos, uh, you can become a patron. There's a whole bunch of perks there. And Jans Tai Chi.com is my website. So if you want to train, um, let me know, reach out. Uh, we're in North Hollywood in California. And, uh, I spend a lot of time in New York as well. My father's in New York and you can always train with him there. Love you guys. And thank you so much, Sam. Have a great week and I'll see you soon. This, love you.